in this ninth video about the voice communications in my stage of partial madness in November 1996 I talk about how I tried to escape from the tortures by those perpetrators I am calling here Companions 96 by leaving Ribat by train at night. In year 1996, I used to work in Benichlef, Louisiana Mayor Center and I abided alone in Mohammedia near Casablanca. I was a civil servant in the Ministry of Interior then in Morocco. My name is Azlaf Mohammed and I am a native of El Ayun near Wujda County, some 600 kilometers away from Casablanca. So, another night in November 1996, in the period of my partial madness, I was wandering in Ribat precisely in the Urjama site, around the upper part of Hassan II Boulevard. Around midnight, all my thought focused on one single aim, to come back to El Ayun, Yeujda, where my parents used to live, some 500 kilometers away from Ribat. I thought then of the train that leads to Wujda. In haste, I headed straight to Central Ribat railway station. Was it a mind control manipulation at distance? Strangely, when I arrived inside Re R Ribat railway station building, no ONCF clerk asked me if I had a ticket when I went downstairs to the platforms. I was then wearing my odd shoes, an old white oriental slipper and an old black sh shoe without heel. I found the train in the railway station even though it came from Casablanca. It was my last night in Ribat in fall 1996. I intended to escape from the voice of Companions 96 that persecuted me in Ribat and Sully during the nights and days before that night of that travel. On board train, in the fourth class of former times, I first sat myself up in the train's cafe near a soldier who wore his green official uniform and a green cap. Then before long, the familiar voice of Companions 96 arrived in the train. Yes, in the train. The voice told me to get up. The voice led me by the aisles up the train in the opposite direction it was going in. It was again a proof that the words of the voice were, were put directly in my brain without it needed the medium of my ears so that the other passengers around me didn't hear the voice's communications. When I arrived in front of the door of the train toilet, the voice distinctly ordered me to enter in the toilet. I obeyed the order. Then inside the toilet, the voice added without delay, Do masturbate now. I took the soap piece that had been there on the, on the sink edge, wetted it with the faucet water, 
and actually started to do the dictated operation. Then the voice rectified its order and told me, Now, do masturbate without you use the soap. It meant to use only saliva. Then the voice used extortion by telling me, Do it quickly or he will enter there soon. The main threat in Companions 96 agenda may be the rape. But the voice added, Get out, get out of the toilet now. The new successive and insistent voices order made me do several disordered goings and coming in the same wagons then only around the train's door near the vestibule. The ticket inspector in company of his peer arrived on the spot at the exact moment when the train did use its, spe its speed to prepare for the stop in Sidi Hiyagharb railway station beyond Kenitra. I recognized that ticket inspector because I had a contact with him once in the past when I used to travel from Muhammadiyah to El Ayun near Wujda by train. The ticket inspector told me, told his peer something about me aloud, which meant that he recognized me likewise. He gave me a light simulated smack on my cheek and ordered me to get out of the train that was then at the stop. I actually got out of the train without I talking. It was utter darkness when I left Sidi Hiyagharb railway station. I first went to a building site to spend there the night, but I, I could no longer bear the cold weather after I tested the warmth of the train. I went then to a little boulevard where I found an open cafe. I spent the night in that cafe after the waiter allowed me to do so. Around dawn, I got out of the cafe and I wandered in Sidi Hiyagharb village till around noon. I begged then bread from a shop where a female attendant gave me a large piece of bread. There in that village, at some moment of that morning, I stood in front of a building site in bricks and contemplated my situation of an engineering technician that I abandoned. Then around noon, again, my entire thought focused on the idea of coming back to Elayun to rejoin my parents there. By train, the night before, I made only about 100 kilometers from the 500 kilometers. I took Sidi Sliman Main's route and I started the journey on feet. On my way, I collected an empty white plastic bottle that I found by the side of the tarmac road. Then afterwards, I went to a fountain with a faucet in order to fill up my bottle in water for the journey. A young chap there asked me about my destination after he kindly laughed at my odd shows. I replied to him, I'm going to the northern Morocco to look after sheep. The girls who were at the fountain to fetch water gave me way to allow me to take water. After I had walked some distance with my bottle filled up with water, the voice of Companion 96 caught up with me again that time in the countryside. The, the first order that the voice then uttered was, throw the bottle. 
I defied the voice and I hadn't obeyed its order. Further ahead, I got a bit away from the road verge at my right and I sat myself up in a field to rest for a moment. A younger man passed by me by chance. I asked him to bring me some bread. But suddenly, while I was sitting there on the ground, and before that younger man came back, my interior silent thinking and monologues were made loud and turned to my, to my own ears to hear them distinctly if it wasn't carried out inside my brain without my ears. My rest w was then disturbed. I got up and headed to the road, but my interior thinking words kept being heard aloud by me. I devised then a defense against that acoustic torture. I started to repeat under, the, under my throat Deliberately, only the long sentence of Emile Coué in French, and which translation is as follows. Every day, at all levels, my health improves more and more. It was a sentence that the yoga instructor Mohamed Hamima had taught me in his courses that I attended for some months in Europe, in years 1994-1995 in Casablanca when I used to live in Muhammadiyah. So it had been only that Kuwait's sentence that became allowed because it drowned then all my interior thinking in words. Then the voice of Companions 96 ordered me to stop repeating that Kuwait sentence, but I again disobeyed the order. Companion 96 let me alone then. While I was going ahead, still heading to the east, the younger man I asked for bread had followed me riding his bicycle and he gave me a large bread piece. Exactly at the sunset moment, I got again out of the road verge at my right, and I sat behind a bush hedge. I ate my bread and drank my water. While sitting there, I deeply wondered if my parents I intended then to rejoin in Elayun Niyoujda were still alive. In fact, Companions 96 torches that lasted more than two weeks in Ribat and Saleh and the lack of sleep put havoc in my mind and I had no news about what had taken place in the real world. Even though I felt despair then, I resumed the walk, still decided to come back to Elayun on feet. When the night arrived, I was near the suburb of a town that was either Sidi Sliman or Sidi Qasim. I can't now remember if I passed by Sidi Sliman town without I stopped in it. At the state of that at the start of that night, when I first sat myself in a vegetable field near that suburb, the, vo the voice of Companion 96 came again, and it was then that Companion 96 led me on Tangier Road after it made me do a short round in that town's suburb, as I explained that in my first three videos. In the next video, the video 10th, I will relate some other events that I lived with the voice of Companion 96 before the occurrence of the event of these events I talked about in this ninth video. As reference for this voice technology, we have the book 
Mind Control, The Ultimate Brave New World by Dr. Bigish. It is on internet.